And it means presenting the facts as much as we can. But it also means listening to the divergent opinions that are out there. I promise you that in, you know, there are, there are a lot of things in this world where there's a black and white and yes and no answer. But most of the things we're looking at every night, Washington policy type matters, there isn't a right answer. Although people act as though there is, but in most cases, there's reasonable deb debates to be had on, on both sides. So our job is to put those out there and treat you, the audience, as intelligent beings who can listen and make up your minds for yourselves. And this is true, by the way, not only of public broadcasting, that we have to make a case for ourselves. This is true, of course, for public universities. And based on my couple of days here, it's true for univer all universities. You know, the world that, that, that of private universities is changing dramatically, too, also based on cost structures and other things. You can't take this for granted anymore that you have a value that people accept and will pay for. You have to make a case for yourself, whether you're a private university here at Furman or whether you're in public broadcasting. Now, I'm going to stop soon, but I do not want to leave with a negative without hope, particularly being at a college campus and among young people, because I'm trying to raise problems and challenges, but not suggesting the end of the world. And in other parts of the world, in fact, people would love to have our problems. They'd love to have our laws and our institutions, our democratic institutions, and our civic government and our wealth, even if it's less than in the past. We have all these things. We just need to tend them. And one of the most important hopes, of course, is education. Students are here, I hope, because there's an interest in learning and an understanding that it's important to learn about the world. At least and understand that this experience of getting a college degree will help you in many different ways. Hopefully with a job, of course, but also an understanding of other people and the world, science, technology, history, literature, and art. And I want to stress those last three things, I think I said, history, literature, and art. I'm so happy to be at a liberal arts college. I, I value it greatly. The society does not value this enough. And, I, and I, I do not mean to put down technology and science in any way. I know that that is a way forward for our society. And it has to be valued. But in doing that, that doesn't mean putting aside all of these things that tell us about our past and who we are. Um, my way on the news hour, one of the most important things I get to do, besides the daily politics or the international affairs, is to present our writers, and our poets, and our musicians, and our actors, and other artists who have so much to tell us about the world. And I know people think come to the news hour and they expect to see a newsmaker. And you expect that that will be a politician, or a general, or a CEO. And they are, they are making the news, and we talk to them. But I want to make a case on the program without saying it, and to you with saying it, that our, our writers and our artists are the cultural newsmakers of our time. And our culture and society, full of divisions, needs those voices as much or more than ever. So I want to put them on television. I want to put them on news, because that's part of our world, and therefore it's part of our news. And in my private life, that's where I go for, call it what you want, solace, personal growth, understanding. When I travel to other countries, the first thing I do is, um, read novels from those countries. And when I've been greatly privileged to go to around the world to travel to the Middle East or to a place like Haiti, we're doing the stories that are, of course, first, you know, front page news about what's happening in those places. Um, but I'm also trying to talk uh, to the writers or the artists in places like that because they're living that and they just have another way of telling us about the world. Because we fall into the cliches too quickly of places like that about poverty and death and hunger. And they live in a world that is actually a rich culture, even if those things exist, poverty and war and hunger. But there's a rich culture there as well. So it's so important to me in my personal life, and it's so important to me in my professional life, and I implore the students here you know, to take that from their time here in their classes and in their personal life. And wh whether you go on in those fields or not, 
it will be of value, and, remem and, and you will remember it. I stand here, one thing that was not said in my biography is that I was a classics major. Now, is there anything less obscure than that? <laughs> I was studying the fifth century BC in college. I actually learned to read ancient Greek at one time. I could not possibly do it now, but um, that's what I did. And I don't regret a moment of it, because that, that's where you learn about history and you learn about things that I see all the time that have an echo back to then. And I see and I learned about empathy, about other lives and about other stories. And the story that a Homer might tell is a, just a, a one way of storytelling. And then I get out there and we on our broadcast are doing another way of storytelling. So that's my pitch to the young folks here. To all of you, I, I don't care if you're Republican or Democrat or conservative or liberal. The, my point is that it's incumbent on all of us to kind of learn and know enough to understand what those beliefs are based on and to be able and willing to defend them and to argue them in an open and respectful way with our fellow citizens so that we protect individual rights in this country, the most important thing. But we see that there is also a value in a larger us that is worthwhile preserving. That's really the genius of this country, I think, as an observer, to get that mix right. And it falls on the young folks here to carry that on, and it falls on all of us as in the news or as news consumers to make sure that we watch for that and we maintain that. So I'm going to be happy to take your questions, but let me just say thank you all for listening. Um, and I'm hoping to get some students in here first, if possible. So if you will raise your hand, we've got a couple of folks with microphones, and since we are recording, uh, please wait till we get you a microphone. This gentleman over here. Go easy on me. I'm feeling sick now. <laughs> <laughs> um, my biggest question is um, that you, know, you talked about kind of like where people get the news and how that affects. Um, you know, the way they vote, or what, you know, the way they vote affects the way we get the news. You know, with the, the show, the newsroom, and all that stuff, do you think that, you know, America as a culture, as a, you know, a voting populace, do you think we're starting to go away from that? Do you think we're starting to, you know, watch, you know, if you're a Democrat, watch Fox News, or a Republican, watch MSNBC, kind of get those questions, or do you think it's kind of staying the same? Well, do you see signs that we're moving toward more of a understanding and listening to both sides? I mean, the other, I mean, you see the newsroom, you see yeah. people coming to this kind of meeting, yeah. but that's all I kind of get. Yeah. I'm a college student, so. Yeah. Well, I told you that I see both sides. I mean, I really do. I don't mean to be sort of namby-pamby about it, you know, but I see that people are interested in, you know, I do talking like this, and people come out, and they have a real concern, and they are very open and open-minded and want to listen, and, and I have people come up to me all the time, you know, I'm a rock rib conservative, you know, but I love the news hour because you guys do the, and then I get the exact opposite, you know. I'm, boy, I'm such a liberal, but I appreciate that you, and, and I'll tell you, every night we get an email from one side or the other um, angry at us, you know, <laughs> saying, uh, once again, the news hour showed its conservative strikes, or once again, the news hour showed what liberal bias it has. Um, so it's a, it's a constant issue for us. In the larger culture, I don't see yet a big turn away from it. But the nature of these things, and when I was talking about the niche world, um, I neglected to say that one of the, um, well, I'll put it in terms of the news hour and PBS, or um, public broadcasting generally. Um, we used to be a small niche in this, when I was talking about the mass media of the networks, you know, that had, 20 million each, so maybe 60 million people are watching every night. And we used to be a small niche. And we had a nice little niche uh, for something different, you know, an hour with a little bit longer and more uh, you know, detail and analysis. Um, in the niche world, we're still a niche. But we're actually a pretty good sized niche. Everybody's smaller, you know? So that's what, that's, this is my PBS pitch. You like that, right? <laughs> so, you know, in the niche world, we're a niche, but everybody's a niche. 
you know, so we're, we're actually kind of larger niche in this, uh, in this world. So that is to say that when things swing too far one way, and if I'm right that things are swinging in a way where people are a little bit more focused and narrow in their, what they take in on news, then there's always a, a, a vacuum that somebody steps in to fill. And that's why I like to make a case for what we do. And I, you know, if people say to me, oh, I hate the yelling here and I hate the yelling there, I say, well, watch us. You know, but you don't have to watch us. There are others who step in to fill these, these places. Um, so that's the hope, is that there would be people to, um, or organizations to step in and fill that vacuum. And you, by the way, you see that in, um, in, the, in the world of news, where, you know, we haven't talked about things like in the loss of investigative journalism or international reporting. There's a lot less of that than there used to be, because it's too expensive for many organizations to do it. It's much cheaper to sit in a studio and just talk. Um, and it's even cheaper if you're just talking opinions without really having done any reporting to base it on. Um, but stepping into that um, vacuum are some interesting experiments uh, to, pre to present more international reporting and investigative reporting. Some of it comes from the nonprofit world. Um, some of it comes from former newspaper people in cities that start websites that, you know, by subscription, you might be asked, you know, you might find yourself facing different ways of of, think of getting that kind of news, and maybe you'd be asked to pay a little something for your, you know, the kind of news you want. But so that's, I think, what I see as the possible thing that might happen that would bring back uh, some of what I, what I think I'm hoping for. We've got time for maybe one more question. Any more students? Okay, we've got one of you. I was just wondering if you thought the rise of partisanship, did it start with people or the media or inside of Congress? Oh boy. <laughs> the chicken or the egg or what's the, <laughs> why did the chicken cross the street? Um, uh, am I mixing my metaphors here? I don't know. Um, that's a good question. But, you know, one thing I... One thing I, I always a little sort of push back at people on is kind of blaming the media for everything. So I don't like to say that the media started it. I don't, I really don't, I don't accept that. You know? The media is a huge, uh, hugely influential force in the country. Um, but I think it's wrong to say, as a lot of people do, blame the media for something like that. You can blame the media, but I think you have to cast your eye on all kinds of, um, institutions, and frankly, you have to look in the mirror. Um, you know, if people didn't like, if they don't like something on, on, on television, don't watch it, for goodness sake. You know, so that's always an element there that um, you can't blame something and then, you know, spend most of your time watching. Um, as I said, parts of the culture have changed, and I don't know quite why that's happened. Our educational system is broken now in many ways. So maybe, and I think that's a big, big part of it, is that people just are not getting the kind of educational grounding. They're not learning civics. You know, they're not learning about our political institutions. And they're not learning a lot of basics. Uh, you guys did, because you were able to get into a good university here. But a lot of people, trust me, you know, that I see do not. And so that's driving part of what's going on, and that's why the educational um, um, problems need to be addressed. So part of it is the culture and things like education. Um, part of it is polit politicians, um, some of them opportunists sort of seeing a way to make a place for themselves. And uh, again, if they weren't getting votes, then they, would, they wouldn't be doing it. So again, look in the mirror at people who vote, you know, who cast the vote. So I can't give you a good answer. It's sort of all of the above. But I would advise against blaming only one, because I think that's probably wrong. I think, I think we all kind of work in tandem. You know, the, when you say the media, when, I, when people say the media to me, I say, do you mean me? You know, I'm just, an, I'm a guy. You know, and I come from a background, and I see things the way you all do. And as I said, I, I go home and, you know, ask my wife about her day or talk about her kids just, just the way you do. So there's not like some magic thing is happening in the media. Um, that's, just, that's just the way the world works. All right. Thank you for your questions. Um, I want to recognize Evan Wall, who's with the Riley Institute Advanced Team, who has a gift.
gift from Mr. Brown. Oh. <laughs> Oh, thank you. <laughs> I mean, a few words. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.